Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number four from the 2025 Calc A, B, and B, C exams. It's a problem about working with the graph of the first derivative. Let's take a look. Uh, the continuous function f is defined on the closed interval from negative six to 12. The graph of f consists of two semicircles and one line segment. It's shown in the figure. Let g be the function defined by the integral, uh, g of x is the integral from six to x of f of t dt. All right, so for part A, we're just gonna find uh, g prime of eight and give a reason. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that g prime of x by the second fundamental theorem is gonna be f of x, I mean, f of x times one. Um, so that's what we have there. And then that means that g prime of eight is actually just f of eight. And to get f of eight, we're gonna go to the picture or the figure and find the point and f of eight is one. I think that that's enough reasoning. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll find out later when they release things that they really wanted us to say by second fundamental theorem or something, but they never have in the past. Uh, let's look at B. Find all uh, values of x in the open interval at which the graph of g has a point of inflection, then we have to give a reason for our answer. So uh, this is my favorite thing to do with these graphs, actually. Uh, we are gonna have points of inflection at all the relative extrema of the graph of the derivative. So first I'm just gonna say, that these are definitely the points of inflection of g. I now just need to justify that. So I'm gonna say g of x has points of inflection at x equals negative three, x equals three, and x equals six. Now we need to give a reason. So I'm gonna say because g prime, which is f of x, has relative extrema at those values. It's also valid to say that um, the slope of g prime changes from negative to positive or positive to negative, or the sign of the slope of g prime changes at those values. Um, I just wanna point out that at x equals six, the graph of f is not differentiable, but that doesn't matter. We don't need f to be differentiable, we just need g to be differentiable, and g is different. Actually, we don't even need g to be differentiable. We just need g to be continuous. We know g is continuous at six because um, its derivative, g's derivative, g prime, exists at six. Um, just wanted to throw that in because that's a very common uh, point of inflection that people will miss because they think we need um, to be differentiable at those points. Not the case. All right, let's take a look at uh, the next part. So we wanna find g of 12 and g of zero, and we want to label our answers. They put a lot more directions, I find, in the questions this year, uh, probably because it's digital for the first time and everybody's just kind of working out what's going on. Uh, so. This is just like an area question. So g of 12 is gonna be the integral from six to 12 of f of t dt. Um, and we're gonna to go to the graph of f. And uh, from six to 12, we get this region. And that's a triangle. So I'm gonna say it's one half base times height. So the base here is six and the height is three. And then you double check that just to make sure. Uh, so I'm gonna say that we get one half of six times three, which you could leave. Um, but that's just 18 divided by two, so that's nine. Okay, and then g of zero. So g of zero, I don't know, a little trickier, I guess. I like to start by writing exactly what it is, right? It's the integral from six to zero of f of t dt. Now, six is bigger than zero, so we're gonna flip the bounds and change the sign. So it's the negative of the integral from zero to six of f of t dt. Now we need to figure out what's going on. So from zero to six, it's this semicircular region. The radius of this region is three. So the area of the whole circle would be pi r squared, so nine pi, but we're only getting half of it. So I'm gonna write down it's negative one half pi r squared. And then I guess we could leave that, uh, but I think it's easy enough to say that's negative nine pi over two. Um, so we found g of zero and we found g of 12. Make a mental note of that, because I think we're gonna need those in the next part. Um, part D, find the value of x at which g attains an absolute minimum on the closed interval. So if you've already looked at the other FRQs, you know this is the second time that we're being asked for like an absolute max min. On the first go around, I did the candidates test, but I also mentioned there was only one critical point, so we could use the lonely critical point theorem. This makes me feel like I really should have done that because here we have no choice but to use the candidates test. So um, for candidates test, we need our function to be continuous. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna just say the setup, right? G of x is continuous, therefore the absolute minimum will occur at either an end point or a critical point. Those are all the candidates. Now uh, for critical points, I'm gonna say that g prime um, is equal to zero. We already have g prime is f in a previous part. Maybe I should have imported that, but they will read with you as you do these. 
So just look for where this graph is zero and you can see it happens at negative six, zero, and six. Negative six we were checking no matter what because it's an endpoint, but uh, it is also a critical point on the closed interval at least. Um, so we're gonna check these. I like to make a table. You should do this too. So it's t, g of t. And now we just need to find the values. But if you remember, I mean, clearly the integral from six to six is just gonna be zero. So these are our candidates. So from six to six, we're definitely getting zero. And then uh, zero we found in the previous part and 12 we also found in the previous part. So really all we need to do is figure out the value at um, negative six. By symmetry, you can kind of just see that it's gonna be zero because you lost nine pi over two and then you're gonna gain nine pi over two. But just in case, um, these are our regions. And what we can do is, you know, we could show the work if we need to. So it's definitely zero. Here's the work. G of negative six is negative of the integral from negative six to six. And then it's the negative of negative nine pi over two plus nine pi over two. So that's definitely a zero. Then we look through this table and we can see that the minimum is gonna occur when t is equal to zero. So I'm just gonna write that up. I forgot to mention candidates test when I like set this up. They don't really need you to say by candidates test as long as you hit all of the requirements of candidates test, but I think it's safer to like communicate to the reader or the grader like what you're doing. So I'm gonna say by candidates test, the absolute minimum is negative nine pi over two, which you don't need. You just need the X coordinate, but we found it, so we might as well say. Uh, the absolute minimum is negative nine pi over two at t equals zero. All right, that's the entirety of this question. I hope this was helpful and good luck.